So how can you help diabetics achieve stable blood sugar levels and avoid the complications of diabetes? I myself have diabetes. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 12. The book Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution was very helpful to me in balancing my diabetes. It's not just another book about a balanced diet and exercising. It's a book that helped me learn how to solve the core problem itself. Let's look at the main principles of the book. My life with diabetes, well beyond a half century and counting. Bernstein, who was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 12, encourages a high level of self-responsibility and believes that a person with diabetes must take responsibility for his health rather than rely on a doctor's intervention. Despite the improvements in the medical equipment available for treatment of the disease, Bernstein suggests that the dietary recommendations of the American Diabetes Association are problematic and in fact cause the patient's condition to deteriorate. According to him, this is the reason that there are almost no diabetics alive today who were diagnosed during the same year he was diagnosed, 1946. Bernstein began to suffer from the complications of severe diabetes in his 20s. Faced with the growing challenges posed by his illness, he happened to come across a newspaper ad for a machine designed to measure blood sugar levels, which was marketed to doctors as a way to monitor patients. His wife, a doctor, bought the device, and Bernstein started to check his sugar levels. He discovered that the level of sugar in his blood peaked and fell dramatically throughout the day. Over time, by comparing the blood glucose response to what he ate, he realized that the main thing that affects blood sugar levels is carbohydrates. What was surprising about this discovery is the fact that the consumption of carbohydrates is recommended by the American Diabetes Association, despite its harmful effects. According to Bernstein, the complications of diabetes are caused by high levels of blood sugar, and diabetics can avoid them altogether by controlling their carbohydrates. Diabetes According to the National Institute of Health, as of 2005, diabetes is the third leading cause of death in the United States. In addition to cases in which the cause of death is listed as diabetes, there are many cases of illness and death due to complications of diabetes. These complications include heart attacks, strokes, and fatal infections. If these cases would be included in the number of cases of death due to diabetes, then diabetes would be the most common cause of death. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is caused by a lack of a hormone called insulin, which is caused by the destruction of the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. The cells are destroyed by the body itself. In this type of diabetes, the patient is dependent on insulin injections. Only about 5% of all diabetes patients suffer from type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is an acquired resistance to insulin. Eating large amounts of carbohydrates causes high levels of sugar in the blood and over-secretion of insulin from the pancreas. When insulin binds to its receptors in the brain, it causes a feeling of hunger. Therefore, the excess insulin secreted after eating too many carbohydrates causes a feeling of hunger, which leads to overeating, which again leads to the secretion of insulin. In this way, a vicious cycle is created. This is the reason that 80% of patients diagnosed with type 2 diabetes suffer from excess weight. According to Bernstein's estimation, the remaining 20% actually suffer from a mild form of type 1 diabetes. Meaning, 100% of those with true type 2 diabetes suffer from excess weight. Patients with type 2 diabetes are treated with sugar-lowering pills. Long-term imbalance in sugar levels as a result of overeating carbohydrates may lead to the destruction of the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas and to dependency on insulin injections, as in type 1 diabetes. The Laws of Small Numbers In order to keep sugar levels balanced, Bernstein suggests working according to the laws of small numbers which state that the smaller the amount of carbohydrates in a meal, the smaller the amount of insulin needed to bring the glucose into the cells. With a high-carbohydrate diet, 
it's very easy to make a mistake when calculating the number of carbohydrates in a meal. Eating a diet rich in carbohydrates leads to a higher demand for insulin, which at high levels is absorbed in a more unpredictable way. Therefore, diabetics should adopt a diet which will cause their blood sugar level to remain steady throughout the day. A change in nutrition to a low carbohydrate diet is more effective than trying to balance fluctuations in sugar due to a carbohydrate rich diet. The basic food groups. As we have seen so far, the key to normalizing blood sugar levels and controlling diabetes lies in nutrition. The three main food groups are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Proteins are converted to glucose in the blood in an inefficient manner and cause a moderate rise in blood sugar. Carbohydrates, on the other hand, no matter what their source, a banana, a piece of cake, a candy, whole wheat bread, potatoes or low-fat cereal, cause a sharp rise in blood sugar levels. The insulin injected in the case of type 1 diabetes or the insulin secreted in the case of type 2 diabetes is not enough to compensate for such a rapid increase. Diet guidelines essential to the treatment of all diabetics. Bernstein recommends reducing carbohydrate intake as much as possible. He recommends eating meat chicken, eggs, seafood, cheese, butter, and a small amount of carbohydrates which are absorbed slowly. Carbohydrates which are absorbed slowly, like proteins, cause a very gradual increase in blood sugar. Sugar levels can therefore be easily corrected. The change in eating habits prevents the experience of drastic changes in blood sugar levels, annoying hunger, and complications associated with high sugar levels. Creating a customized meal plan. Bernstein suggests dividing food intake into three daily meals. The amount of protein in each meal should be constant and the amount of carbohydrates as follows. Breakfast should include six grams of carbohydrates and lunch and dinner should each include 12 grams of carbohydrates. Just as an example, six grams of carbohydrates is about equal to a small cracker or a cup of uncooked vegetables which don't cause a rapid increase in sugar levels. The reason he recommends eating less carbohydrates in the morning is the dawn phenomenon. The dawn effect describes the increased deactivation of insulin by the liver in the morning compared to other times of the day. As a result of this phenomenon, insulin activity is lower in the mornings. Because the focus is on controlling carbohydrates, it's very easy to achieve balanced sugar levels throughout the day. The daily amount of carbohydrates recommended by Bernstein is 30 grams. This compared to the recommendations of the American Diabetes Association, which specified 250 grams of carbohydrates in a 2000 calorie diet. To illustrate, Bernstein recommends that the amount of carbohydrates represent only about 6% of the daily diet, compared to the 50% recommended by the American Diabetes Association. How to prevent and correct low blood sugar. As we know, keeping blood sugar levels steady is a daily challenge faced by all those who suffer from diabetes. Bernstein also addresses the topic of fixing blood sugar levels. In the case of low blood sugar, he recommends eating a sugar cube. Why a cube of sugar and not say a piece of bread or a soft drink? Because a cube of sugar has a measured amount of glucose in it. The effects of other foods are more unpredictable since the exact amount of carbohydrates they contain is unknown and their effects are not immediate. They may cause a spike in blood sugar even several hours after the low sugar event. Subscribe to updates from Meaning A to Z if you would like to learn more and continue receiving inspiration to improve your life.